Hey, what's up, YouTube? Fritz Jones Investing back with another video. And today we'll be talking about how the market has been performing recently, and we'll be taking some different looks at the indices. We'll also be taking some look at some recent earnings report from some major market players. And finally, I'll leave you with some uh, recent stocks that I've been buying in my portfolio to be fully transparent with you guys. So with no further ado, let's get right into the video. So we're starting off with the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, it closed at 34,725 points. And we can see how it's performing over the last six months, kind of up and down. For the last five days, it's been up 1.3%. For the past month, it's been down 4.44%. The last three months, down 3%. And year to date, down 4%. The one year average uh, has been up 15%. So these are some major market players um, in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You can see how it's been performing. Lots of green in the market today. So lots of optimism that the interest rates won't really have a profound impact upon the stock market. Um, some of my favorite stocks in this list include Apple, I uh, like Nike, uh, Walgreens, United Health, um, some of these kind of defensive companies. Um, that have performed really well even through uh, the ups and downs of the market. Honeywell is a company that I've also been interested in possibly getting into. Chevron was down a little bit today, but the price of oil going up and down, I think that the price of gas um, and the gas companies have been very volatile. 3M has also been down. They manufacture a lot of masks and healthcare equipment, and Caterpillar has been down too, um, even though they beat their earnings expectations. So these are some of the biggest S&P 500 components um, of the stock market. The stock market, uh, the S&P 500 was up 2.43% today. Like I said, one of my favorite stocks kind of leading the charge. Microsoft was also up. Amazon, a lot of green in the market today. Google, so I did uh, add some purchases to those particular companies today. Tesla was also up 2%, even though they had a, uh, a questionable uh, earnings report with as far as Elon Musk uh, compensation package, but still performed relatively well, still making a lot of money. I'm gonna continue to invest in that company. Pepsi was up today. Like I said, Chevron once again down a little bit. Wells Fargo. We're just going to take a look at the top 100 companies in the S&P 500 today. There's 500, so it gives you a good list of different kinds of companies, something that you may want to research in your own portfolio. So that way you can possibly uh, invest and uh, continue to expand upon your portfolio. at and still up. Um, I don't haven't heard really much news about them possibly uh, cutting their dividend quite yet. Netflix, which has been taking a beating up today, 0.25%, possibly opening up a position in that particular company. Uh, Lowe's was up today, one of my favorite stocks. As far as uh, new homes being built, I think that's a great company. And then home remodeling, which is coming back into the foray. Um, I think it's a great company to invest in. Intuit, TurboTax, everyone has to do their taxes every year. I think this is a stable company down from their highs for almost $700. Uh, CVS up today, Honeywell, once again, we see Oracle. Um, AMD, which is a semiconductor company, has been beaten down in the past couple of weeks. They were down from their highs of $150. In my personal opinion, I think it's a great stock to possibly get into. BlackRock is also down. This stock was almost $1,000 two months ago. Um, American Tower, uh, they control a lot of the cell phone towers in the U.S. I think it's a stable company to get into. Target down from their highs of $260. Just a lot of companies down from their recent highs. Intuitive Surgical, um, another company that I like. Micron, which is another semiconductor company. Uh, we have Duke Energy rounding out the top 100. And you can see some of the other ones. Ford, uh, they're coming out with more EVs in the future. So hopefully they'll be able to expand. Um, and then this is another indices. This is the Russell 2000 Index. It comprises 2,000 small cap stocks within the stock market. You can see that it closed at $1,968.51, and, um, and it was up 37.22 points, or 1.93%, kind of up and down over the past uh, couple months and into uh, almost the year. Um, uh, it kind of gives you a good spectrum as to the overall health of the stock market with the interest rates going up and down. So just to kind of give you a quick look at that. Now, we're not going to go over those 2,000 stocks, but these are some of the largest and smallest Russell 2000 companies. Some companies that I'm very familiar with are Avis, the rental car company, AMC, uh, Crocs. And like I said, these small cap stocks tend to be more economically sensitive and cyclical than large cap stocks. So it kind of gives you a macro environment for the stock market. And we can see that the uh, Russell 2000 stocks tend to be more volatile and risky, especially with the C19 and then the rising interest rates that are possible in the future of the stock market. This was a Wall Street Journal article 
written up talking about how almost a third of the Russell 2000 stocks are made of companies with no profit. Now, these companies tend to fare uh, much less in the rising interest rates because those companies can take less profits, leading to a decrease in their stock price. And also, it costs more money for them to be able to borrow money. And if their bottom line decreases, then investors tend to lose interest and sell out of those companies. So in this kind of environment, I tend to like to invest in more boring companies, companies that have shown a track record of generating uh, generous profits, even in the face of rising interest rates and also the face of a pandemic. Um, so if I had any advice for you, it would be to just study, do your own research so that way you can invest in companies that make sure that they turn a profit so that way you don't lose uh, your hard earned money. I'm not gonna really tell you which companies to buy. Um, you can you know research that yourself. Um, so a lot of the companies, almost 31% of them, like I said, have turned no profit. Um, over 2,000 companies, way more than we can cover in this particular video. But these are some companies that you may be familiar with that have taken losses in the last 12 months. We have Revlon down at 15%. Uh, Nikola, which I don't understand how they're still existing, down almost 25% with their fake truck. Rite Aid was down 27%, and Fubo TV was down over 33%. They're facing a lot of competition from services such as Roku TV, Netflix, and also Hulu. So I'm not sure if they can carve out a niche if they're not yet profitable quite yet. Next, we'll take a look at some earnings reports from some of the largest companies in the stock market. The first is Microsoft. I love investing in this company because they continue to increase their revenues over time. The revenue rose by 20% to $51.7 billion, and their net income improved by 21% to $18.8 billion. Now, how they split their business, 31% of their revenue came from productivity and businesses, and Townsend Cloud comprised 35% of the revenue, and more personal computing comprised 34%. Now, as far as growth, productivity and businesses had 19 point uh, percent revenue uh, growth year over year, Intelligent Cloud 26 percent, and more personal computing grew by 15 percent. So, double digit growth across all the segments. Uh, Microsoft Office revenues rose by 14 percent, Dynamics grew by 29 percent, and LinkedIn's revenue increased by 37 uh, percent. Their Intelligent Cloud segment, Azure, uh, which ranked uh, second after Amazon, their revenues rose by 29 percent. Now, the, right now, like I said, they're second, um, and they also increased their market share for Azure. In Q, let's, Q3 of 2019, they comprised 17% of the market, and this rose to 21%, while Amazon Web Services shrunk from 33% to 32%. Now, if Microsoft is able to increase uh, Azure's market share, which is a high uh, margin business, then they'll be able to improve their overall margins, uh, which are still healthy. Uh, they shrunk from 44 percent in q1 down to 41 percent but still relatively well now it's talking about how uh, microsoft is trading 32 times its forward earnings me personally i'm willing to pay more for this particular stock if it's continued to have double digit growth in the different segments of its business and if their revenue is increasing by 20 percent in the face of rising interest rates and also in the face of a pandemic next is apple which had earnings of over 30 billion dollars for the first time ever in the company's uh, history Simply amazing. Um, Apple had sales of over $124 billion, up from $111 billion last year, and their earnings were $2.10 per share. Um, last year was $1.68 a share. So even as there's more shares, as the stock prices increase, Apple has continued to perform well, and their shares were up 5% after hours on the result of the good news. Their iPhone uh, sales had hit revenues of $71.63 billion, up from $65.6 billion a year earlier. So even as the market continues to become saturated with iPhones. Apple continues to sell more and more of these things. They're vastly popular. I'm sure you're probably watching this on an Apple device right now. We see that they increased by, uh, looks like over 1.8 billion uh, devices, which is their active base uh, right now. This continues to grow. This will probably reach 2 billion relatively soon. Um, Apple revenue grew by 11.2% in the holiday quarter. It looks like people had a little bit more money to spend this year, so they spent money on Apple products. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, the company generated $10.85 billion from Mac revenue. Last year was $8.68 billion. Uh, the only thing that decreased was their iPad sales. I do believe that people replaced their iPads a lot less than they replaced their Apple phones, and they probably had components that they took from the iPad and possibly put them in the iPhone, which is their most profitable segment. So it kind of makes sense as to why the iPad sales decreased. Now, their wearables increased uh, to $14.7 billion of revenue, up from $12.97 billion uh, last year. This is a cash cow. Love investing with Apple. Warren Buffett, who was the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, had 
their shares in Apple increased by almost $10 billion because Apple stock rose by 7% on the strong earnings report. My shares also rose by $860, so much smaller, but really proud of being able to invest in the stock and seeing it rise on a strong earnings report. So great job, Apple, on making everyone some money today. So next we'll talk about my stock buys for January 28th, 2022. I like to buy my stocks in percentage of shares instead of particular dollar amounts. So you'll see mine look a little bit different, but this is how I purchased my stocks. Um, I bought 10% shares in Horizon Technology Finance. I bought 10% of one share of SoFi Technologies, which has been beaten down recently. I bought 1% stake in Caterpillar. I bought 3% of one share of Duke Energy, 1% of Enphase, 3% of Element Solutions, I bought 1 and 2% of Home Depot and Lowe's. I bought 2% of Abbott. I bought 10% shares in Stag Industrial. I also bought 10% shares in SPHD. 5% um, shares of Realty Income. I bought half a share of Prospect Capital, a business development company. I bought 10% shares of Main Street Capital, another business development company. Uh, LTC and Gladstone Commercial, I bought 30% of one share. Um, I bought... 1% of Equinix, a stock that has been beaten down recently, down from its highs of around $850. EPR Properties, I bought 10% of one share. Target, I bought 4% of a share. PayPal, one of my favorite fintech stocks, I bought 3% of one share. Um, Nike, 1%. Costco, I bought 2.5%. Uh, I bought half of a percent of Amazon. Toyota, the leading car producer in the world, I bought 5%. Um, since Tesla's price was down so low, I bought 26% of one share. I think their earnings report fared very well. So this company has continued to grow in the future. 55% um, of one share of Ford. Taiwan Semiconductor, I bought 2.5% of one share. 10% shares of NVIDIA. 5% share of Cloudflare. 9.5% um, of Microsoft. Intuit, I bought 2.5%. Google, I actually ended up purchasing 1% of a share down from its highs of around $3,000. AMD, I bought 5%. Adobe, I bought 3%. This stock was almost a $700 stock a month and a half ago. And finally, Apple, I bought 19% of one share on its strong earnings report um, and its continued cash flows. So what do you think about my stock buys? Please don't forget to leave those likes and those comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So I'm interested to hear what you're doing. Are you selling off your stocks and taking profits or are you uh, buying the dip? My recommendation is that you buy the dip, but only after you've done research to make sure that these companies are making you money. So that way you don't lose your hard earned money. This has been Fritz Jones Investing back with another update, reminding you to increase your assets and decrease your liabilities. So that way one day you can retire early and do the things that you want to do. I hope you enjoyed the video today and learned something. Please stay safe from the snow out there. Take a day off, spend some time with your family, and continue collecting that passive income. All right, peace out, guys. Thanks for watching.